Hello, my beautiful fountain friends. Welcome to Creepy Nibs. I'm the Countess. It is ink review time. Are you ready? I'm ready. Super, super hyped. Uh, as soon as I tried the sample of this and like saw pictures of it, um, so I had to do this review immediately. <laughs> um, here we have Jacques Urban Shogun, or do we? <laughs> here we go. Thank you. Imagined by Kenzo Takada, He's a fashion designer who passed away in 2020, and this was released in his memory. So here we go. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, love this bottle. It's a fancy square. Lid is nice, makes a good sound. The mouth is pretty wide. Awesome opossum. Oh, Hell yes, got that sparkly label. Love that. Um, here's the box. Again, with the sparkly labels. This particular bottle was gifted to me by Annie Anonymous. So thank you, Annie. Much appreciated. Um, yeah, let's go comparisons first. It's got a lot of stuff to cover. Just crank it out. Right, here's the card. I went over it again because I didn't feel like I got enough shimmer in the swatch the first time. Um, but uh, apparently I did. It looks a lot more floofy on camera than it does in person. That, that really catches all that shimmer. It's a really, really fine shimmer. And here you can see the different colors, like a red shimmer and then like a goldish kind of shimmer, like goldy copper. And they combine to form this breathtaking kind of rose gold. So that's really cool. We'll talk more about the two different shimmers in a bit, but uh, if you want some some sparkly goodness, uh huh. Oh yeah, look at that. Cool, love that. All right, here we have Diatramentus Velvet Black Copper, closest thing I have. They're not terribly dissimilar, but Shogun is definitely a darker black. Even though Shogun's really more like a dark kind of warm gray. Um. There, you can really see the difference there in the base color. The shimmer doesn't look too dissimilar. Really break it down. This one is definitely just straight up that coppery rose gold kind of shimmer. Whereas this one, there's a little bit of variation. And uh, the Geotromance shimmer is a lot heavier. Oh, didn't come off of my finger. What does that one do? Little bit, little bit, but that's also super heavy. Um, so there's those two. If you have either one of those, I prefer this one. Here we have J'ai a bon gris orage, stormy gray. I don't know what happened to this card here. I must have gotten it wet at some point. Um, but yeah, very different. Um, this is a much cooler gray than this, and of course it has a straight up gold shimmer instead of. Red and copper. Both very pretty. They do not replace one another. Uh, here's color of shiny black. Very different. I just wanted to get all of like the shimmery black inks that I had to compare. Very, very different shimmer. The particles are way bigger on the color verse, and I honestly like kind of like it better. Like the way it catches the light like that. Oh, that's mesmerizing. It's so pretty. I love this ink. I love it. I love it so much. Um, but this is definitely, again, a cooler black than Shogun. And this one seems to have a little bit of sheen, a bit of gold sheen. So that's pretty dope. <laughs> love that. But I, I just, I love the way it sparkles. Beautiful. Uh, here we have Birmingham Midnight Twinkle, which you cannot really see through the shimmer, 
But if I turn it like that, you see, it's again, it's a cooler, it's a cooler base color. And it's got silver shimmer and a lot of it. This is mm -hmm, probably uh, if I ever fill a pen with one of these Birmingham twinkles, I don't think I'll shake it up as much. Because that is just overpowering. Bananas. Uh, and here, I guess the, this is like the closest thing I thought would match with the base color, but I think it's a little darker and a little bit cooler. Um, this is the old Van Diemen's Federation peak. But now looking at them side by side, you know, I'm kind of, uh, kind of rethinking my choice. It's not very close at all. I should have, uh, should have checked that before I started recording, but I didn't. Let's look at the chromatography. Very, very pretty, very interesting. I started cutting my strips a little smaller. Maybe they could last a little longer. All right, all right. Here's the one I let dry. Here's the one I put in the water instantly. See that line of shimmer sticks around at the bottom? And then it goes into this gray with like some yellow and then a dark navy kind of color. And then up at the tippy top, it's, I don't know how to describe that color. It's kind of purple gray. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure, but it, it's pretty. It's pretty nice kind of, I don't know. It's not like a straight up black chromatography. You know what I mean? And then in the one I let dry, that line stayed really dark. But it does a lot of the same things going up, except that navy... Oops. This is so hard to fiddle with. Like that. that navy stuck around by the line instead of going all the way up like that one did. Um, again, the shimmer stuck around. I think I might have like nudged it with my finger. Smeared away some of the shimmer. Well, yeah, that same kind of thing. Like that kind of greeny kind of golden up into the navy, into that um, purpley gray. Cool. That's cool. That's cool. We like that. All right. Let's uh, take a look at the bleach test. Beautiful reaction. Very gorgeous. Obliterates, obliterates it in the lighter part, of course, but we get that really nice kind of like a shady yellowy orangey color yes and then um i wrote on it with some water and then dripped some on and dabbed it up but you can't really see it you can see like the the indent of the glass pen across the paper but you can't see um <coughs> where it uh where it picked up so that's pretty cool this also does pretty things with water. I didn't want to move too much though. It, we'll, we'll see that on some of the paper tests. Um, so it's like water on this side, pure ink on this side. We blend them into each other. I can't speak. Into each other. And then kind of like tilt the paper around. You know? See what we get. We get that kind of gold that's in the chromatography. A little bit of that navy blue. Interesting, super pretty. All right, now the art part that um, I'm not happy with at all, but I didn't want to waste another piece of watercolor paper trying to get this ink to do cool things that I liked. Um, <laughs> you can see where I aggressively did a splat because I hated, <laughs> I hate it, <laughs> I hate it. Um, I've been super obsessed with Nosferatu lately and German expressionist silent horror films in general. I don't know why, it's just <laughs> this week's hyperfixation. I want to do something inspired by one of those those old posters, the rats jumping out of the coffin. I have Orlok chilling over there. That splat got <laughs> shimmer everywhere. Um, the idea was to have the rats be like all shimmer, but a lot of the detail got lost and was probably never there to begin with. I did little dots of bleach for the eyes. Uh, which I regretted, because <laughs> I feel like it would be better if I just left some white of the paper, but you can really see there's that variation again. You know, I didn't really have good control over the saturation, which I could have done differently, but um, now that eyeshadow. 
I'm gonna look at that eyeshadow swatch. I could probably grab an eyeshadow and swatch it and look identical. Um, but see along the edges there, through all that red shimmer, I wanted it to go. So the red shimmer seems a lot lighter and stickier than the like coppery gold shimmer. Here we can see it in the sample vial. That's all the red shimmer, and it floats. It floats at the top. See that? Um, and it's um, <clears throat> uh, rather difficult to clean out of certain pens. I mean, I got it eventually. Um, all right, here's the pens used for the paper test. They're both clean now. Um, I wasn't gonna clean this one, <clears throat> so I usually like pick one after I'm all done, but like, I've been having so many piston problems with this 580 rose gold. I don't understand why. It'll like get stuck, and it'll take it apart, and it'll grease it, and it'll put it back in, and it'll be fine with it. It's fine if it's just air, but when there's ink in it, it doesn't matter what ink. It's not this ink specifically that's doing it. But there's a, like a lot of backward resistance, and I don't really like that. Um, so this is the 580 uh, Smoke Rose Gold in a broad nib. And you can see it all up there, and there's all that, that red shimmer that sticks to the top. That's around the piston. And the syringe, it'll like stick to that too. You're gonna take apart the syringe, and yeah. So that's not super fun. But the ink is pretty enough that it's generally worth it. Um, and here's my Pelican M205 Moonstone with fine nib. Uh, it cleaned and flowed out of this pen brilliantly. Um, you can't really see any traces of the red. I mean, there's a bunch of glitter in this pen anyway. Um, piston still operates very smooth. Yeah. Yeah, see? Can't really... No real traces. Um, I took the nib and feet out, just unscrews, and went with like a little an old paintbrush that I used to get into small places. Um, so yeah, the, uh, this was, it was great out of both of these pens for the most part. I still had, I had a few clogging issues with, the um, with the Twisby, ironically, but the Pelican just kept flowing. It was amazing the whole time. Um, except it really front loads the shimmer, but we'll see that later. Here we have the paper tests. Claire Fontaine, 90 grams per square meter. Um. That fine and the broad look pretty, pretty similar. I thought about redoing them with maybe like a finer nib, like a broader nib, and I decided not to waste the paper. So we just, just kept it like this. Oh, yeah, so that fine, it's really wet. The feed really keeps up. Um, you can see the broad. I seem to have a little bit of trouble, um, but it's still nice to let. Look at all of that shimmer. Look at that shimmer. Oh my god. That's beautiful. Beautiful. I should probably turn my light down a little bit. Like, look at that. Holy bananas. Yes. Scrubbies are really good. Um, dry times were weird. Um, I don't know. Something about that Pelican is was wetter than the Broad 580, which is not my general experience with the 580. It is my experience with the Pelican, though, because that thing's amazing. So if you're wondering if you can put Shimmer in a Pelican M205 and have it be okay. Yeah, yeah, as far as I have noticed, absolutely. Um, you see that separation of, of the different colors in the swatch there. See, it didn't really want to move in the water. Uh, and on the side, I thought maybe I could, like, fill it with this in this Pilot Metropolitan, Metropolitan with a pine nib. <laughs> um, it did, no, no, um, yeah, no, no. This does not play well with very fine nibs, at least not any of the ones that I've tried. Because I wanted to put it in my Twisby Mini with a fine nib, but that just, n nope, no, n uh, not at all. 45 seconds to dry in both. The smear, the smear went farther on the fine than it did on the broad. Whatever. Uh, water resistance is astounding. 
Even that the shimmer sticks around. Like that didn't move. That's, that's kind of amazing. It looks a little smeary, but like yo, holy bananas. And then on the back, not really much of anything. A little bit of like ghosting in this watch, but it's gonna do that. So that's good. Next, the Marman Nemosine, 80 gram paper. Here we can see where the shimmer and the fine gets front loaded, because in the scrubby you don't get it as much. I like agitated the pen uh, in between each of the papers. Just so you can see it at its best. Again, took 50 seconds to dry in both. I don't know. I don't know what was going on with the Twisby clogging as much as uh, as much as it did. Um, again, the separation of the shimmer didn't really want to move in water. Like kind of cauliflowered out a bit. That's it. Again, water test super dope. Here's that Metropolitan Fine. It did not want to write uh, at all. Shimmer still beautiful. On the back, get a little bit of. Looks like it almost bled through in that scrubby. That might also be just on the back of the paper. I don't know. Uh, and then it pushed through in the water test, which was interesting. Here we have Rhodia, 70 gram. It is 70, isn't it? Or is it 80? Oh my god, have I been doing this wrong the whole time? <laughs> I don't know anymore. I don't know. Life isn't real. Out again. Look at all of that shimmer being shimmer tastic. Except that's diamine. But like, yo. But hell yeah. Beautiful. 36 in the fine, 35 in the broad. Separation of the shimmer again. Still didn't really want to move. Um, again, water test incredible. Shimmer sticks around, ink stays around. It's all around, uh, all around pretty good in that department. On the back, you had a little bit of, of ghosting. It doesn't seem to want to bleed, but. Yeah, any flow problems that I've had <coughs> with uh, with that Twisby are likely due to the shimmer, kind of like it's like a five car pileup or whatever, like a train crash, where it's just like <coughs> doesn't want to go. Once like a little bit gets stopped at the top, it just does not want to allow much through. But it came through anyway. Like <coughs> I didn't have hard starts or anything. It's just the line got a little finer than I would like or expect for that matter. Here's the Tomoy River 68 cream. Beautiful. Beautiful. You see the base color there in that scrubby. Look at that. Look at that. Holy crap. The Metropolitan Fine. Again, nope. <laughs> nope. 55 in the fine, 47 in the broad. Again, didn't really want to move too much. Separation of the shimmer color. Water test again. Fantastic. Fantastic. Doesn't want to move. Amazing. Ooh. On the back. Uh, I was expecting a little bit more ghosting after what I saw on the Rodia, but this just doesn't seem to want to. Like that. I like the back of it. Something white. Yeah, it's just normal toy river see-throughness. Here we have 52 white. Again, beautiful. The Pelican front loaded the shimmer again. Can we see it in like the word Pelican? Pelican? I like to say Pelican because of birds. I like birds. That shimmer in the broad. <laughs> Super good. Dry times took forever. Uh, 100 seconds in the fine and 70 in the broad. 
We have that separation again. It was like, it's a lot more stark here than it was. Oh, and look at the way it blended out there. That was really nice. I liked moving on this paper. Um, oh, here we see, this is like the kind of thing that the rod would do sometimes. It just gets kind of stuck and it looks finer than the fine, even though it's broad. So then I, like, I did it again. And that's about the correct line width. Uh, again, water toast, amazing. Kind of fuzzes out a little bit, but really not anything terrible. Look at all that shimmer. Oh my God. And then on the back, um, a little bit of almost want to bleed through there. Um, and there's some, there is definitely some ghosting. You can see through it pretty easily. It's a dark ink <coughs> on 52 gram paper. Stop clearing your throat so much. <laughs> Whatever. Here we have HP Premium Laser Jet, 32 pound. Uh, let's keep that Tomoe River here so you can see. Spreading. Spreading. Definite, absolute spreading. Wasn't terrible, but definitely wider line with shimmer still so, shimmer still shows up beautifully. I dare you to try and say that without messing it up. <laughs> really kind of sang out of that diamond. Yeah, there's no no sheen, no shading, just shimmer. Took six seconds in the fine and four in the broad. I did not want to move. Um, I was able to push some of the shimmer out, but not any of that. It's not the ink part. And not as much separation of the colors. Again, water test. Fantastic. Fantastic. And on the back, we got some bleed. Little tiny dots of it. But there is bleed on this paper. This is 32 pound paper. I don't know what that translates to in GSM, but it's a lot. We have that pelican bled through, Twisby kind of bled through. It's just in dots. It's not as bad as our next selection, but uh, it's a thing that happened. Here, oops. Here is the shitty copy paper. But <laughs> the shiver actually looks pretty good. Not gonna lie, Shimmer saved this one. Um, but that spread bonkers, bonkers. There's feathering a little bit here and there, but really, you just wanted to like spread forever, spread your wings and fly. That Metrofine seemed to do better on this paper than it did on any of the other ones. Uh, but maybe that's just because it like sucks the ink out. Oops, did that wrong. Um, again, didn't want to move. Water just didn't do too many crazy things. It like spidered out more than the other ones did, but still sticks around. You swatch it, gross. You can see like the lines of the red shimmer where it wanted to come out. About two seconds to dry in both. On the back, everything bled. Everything bled, everything bled, everything bled, bled everywhere. This is just dots of it in every single line. Um, these are both pretty wet pens, um, and I wouldn't recommend this in an extra fine or even like a pilot fine. Um, so yeah, you're, you're not really going to do any better than this. And yeah, it looks okay on the front and that spread is bananas though but yeah still shimmery and here we have Midori MD cotton paper it looks really pretty metrofine again no just don't I feel like I was kind of running out of shimmer in that pelican but here it's like really Really intense, but then in the writing spot, in the scrubby, it's not quite as intense. Uh, but that Twisby, oof, that was really good. Look at that, that was super good. 
Love this paper. Always have. Always will. Love the way ink reacts with it. Oh, look at that swatch. Took a minute to dry in the fine and 45 seconds in the broad. Um, there we actually see some of that, that line difference. Um, again, the, the separation, but it's kind of like all over the place. Uh, I wanted to move a little bit here. That was nice. Yeah. Yeah, I love this watch the best out of all of them. Again, water chest, amazing. Uh, did seem to want to fuzz out a little bit more than on um, something like the Tomoe River, but it stays darker. That's pretty cool. In the back, again, a little bit of wanting to ghost in certain spots, but nothing bled through. Nothing super bad. I would write on both sides of that paper, and I did. Um, Uh, so here's another Midori MD cotton sample. Uh, this this side is with the Twisby Broad. I kind of agitated the pen again whenever I saw that it was getting a little less shimmery. See, like there, you don't really get... It's still there. You can still see it faintly, but you don't really, you don't get it like you get it like with here. Um, but yeah. And then on the other side, this is with the, the Pelican. And this was after all of the other paper tests were done. Um, so we get a lot of shimmer here, but then almost nothing in the rest of it. So that kind of stunk, but it's not, you know, it could be worse. It could be worse. But yeah, that was that was a little bit of a bummer. But at least the feed kept up. It didn't clog at all whatsoever. So that was dope. And here we have Leuchtturm, 1917. Ah, we're going to have to look at it upside down. <laughs> um, but look at the way the shimmer looks on this paper is so good. It's so good. I just recently got a... Um, a blank Leuchtturm that I plan to use as a sketchbook, or whatever I want to use it for, really. But it's blank, and it's pretty, I like it. Took 48 seconds in the fine, 65 in the broad. Finally, we have some difference. <laughs> um, some expected differences between the broad and the fine. Um, but yeah, that scrubby of the Metro. Nope, nope, nah, -uh. no, hell no. Um, then again, that separation of the color. Oh, that Twisby was so good with it. I don't know why my piston is being so grumpy. Does anybody else have that problem? Um, in the back. You definitely see something's there. It's a little darker. But it's not, it's not super bad. You know, that's just what you have to deal with in a notebook. So, I believe that is everything for this. If you've tried this ink, let me know how you feel about it. Pens you like it in. Um, pretty sure everybody's putting it in their smoke rose gold Twisbees, if they have them. That was Jacobin Shogun by Kenzo ha ha Hakata. Takata, my bad. Um, so yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was informative or useful to you in some capacity, way, or form. It was fun. I hope you had fun. This was fun. I love you. Punch out these. Bye!